Hi, this is Nick Lauer, my good buddy Kyle Sloan, and we're going to talk a little bit about a, a, a fundamental principle in developing your Ashiwaza. When we get into Ashiwaza work, which, which around here is the foundational material that we work with to develop uh, all, all of our standing techniques, uh, one quality that you must imbue in your practice uh, to begin with is the principle of entrainment, the principle of, of learning to uh, move in the same rhythm of rise and fall with the man as he's moving. If Kyle is walking and we're walking back and forth with no connection between us and he's walking backwards and I'm walking forward and we can have random foot timing. His feet are hitting the ground at certain times, my feet are hitting the ground at certain times and they're not necessarily hitting at the same time. Everything's just sort of a randomized event because it's unconnected. There's no, there's no uh, entrainment going on. To develop your Ashiwaza skill, we need to be very, very sensitive to when certain events are happening in the man's body that we're trying to throw. So if he takes a step back, we need to know exactly when that foot is hitting the ground and exactly when this next foot is rising. In order to do that, we entrain. So I lay a hand on the man, and when his foot goes back, my foot goes forward, and I practice letting my foot hit the ground at exactly the same time as letting his foot hit the ground. And when he goes forward, boom, boom, and it's we're hitting all at once. His feet are accepting weight at the same time my feet are accepting weight. We're both going down together and rising together and down together and rising together and down together. So we get very rhythmically constant. What this allows for is, is for a sensitivity within yourself to know when the timing of his foot hitting the ground because you know when your foot hitting the ground. <laughs> you know when you're about to put weight on your own foot. It's a, it's a natural biomechanical reference point that, that if you tune into, becomes automatic. If you make it your habitual practice that whenever you lay hands on the person and he begins to move that you get in rhythm and get in step with him, then wow, I knew he was about to put his foot down. I didn't have to look down. I didn't have to get ready. I knew because I knew when my foot was going to hit the ground. I could read the timing and anticipate when his foot had to be there because I knew when my foot was going to have to be there. Now the actual activity of that throw happened because I made a quick change. I got out of rhythm. I broke the entrainment to take advantage of a predicted point in time and space, which was the occurrence of this foot coming there. So as I did the throw to him, my feet broke the entrainment cycle and did an extra cycle. So normally, this foot would go there and this foot would match that. But in that particular time, I predict the timing and then change. To do, I do two little foot cycles within the same beat and that creates the effect we're looking for. So it's not that you never get out of the basic entrainment. In fact, to do several types of application of Ashiwaza you do alter, you get there a little before or a little behind, or you make extra cycles like in uh, Koichi there. But you must develop the entrainment first. You must get very consistent first and then learn to exploit it as a tool. It's a baseline or a, or a, yeah, a benchmark that you have to establish as a consistency of your practice to develop fine Ashiwaza work. So thank you, good.